Shalom Aleichem. Tadun. Lazer and Chaim from the Vev Syria. Yid Life Crisis. Hey, it's us, Jamie and Ellie from Yid Life Crisis. We are here in Detroit Rock City. Detroit Rock Shadow. Motown. Mo Shtetl. Michigan. Michigan. Here to explore the Jewish community past, present, and future, so let's dive in. Yes. Into the into the story, not the frigid river. No, this is cold. Cold. When Jamie and I arrived in Detroit, it was cold. Like freezing your tochas off in an outhouse in Siberia cold. We heard about this place where some young Hevra men were reviving the ancient art of the Schwitz, so we dipped in for some heat. Hi, we're here for the Schwitz. We want a Schwitz. For the Schwitz. Oh, oh, he should just opened it. Oh, he buzzed us in. Hey, this is the same place as the outside? Warm us up. Yeah, Jamie. Get life crisis. I am Alan. Welcome hey, Alan. to the Schwitz. Right. Are you ready to get warm? Yeah. Ready and waiting. This way, guys. Wow. Okay. This is remarkable because from the outside you would not know <laughs> this is what's going on in here, right? Well, exactly. well hidden secret. Yeah. It's our secret. This place was built in 1918 mm -hmm. and it was opened as a bathhouse in 1930 and it's been in continuous operation since then. Should we slip into something more comfortable? I'd like that. Right. We gotta get naked to get in the steam. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. So the Jewish community used to live in this neighborhood, and uh, from Eastern Europe, they had communal bathing. It was a place where all kinds of people would come here, including the Purple Gang. The Purple Gang was the Detroit uh, Jewish Mafia. It doesn't matter what your religion is, or what your background is, or what your gender is. Uh, we think everybody can benefit from this steam room, and so we've opened the doors to literally everybody. This is a great first stop. I mean, I, I don't know. I like Detroit so far, although I'll tell you that much. I'm schwitzing. Is anybody else? You, you're totally schwitzing. Okay, cool. To truly experience the steam room, you have to get hot, and we have to give you a steam and a plates. The way that we do the plates is uh, you, you lay down. Rock, flat. paper, bait some. <laughs> I feel connected with my ancestors. Are you used to this? Is there a blessing for this? L'chaim, l'chaim, the Schmitz! <laughs> now that we had warmed our kishkas, Ellie and I were hungry, as usual. So we met up with Jess Katz, an impressive young Detroit professional at a kosher deli in the Orthodox Oak Park neighborhood. New? Let's nosh! Since it is Hanukkah, should we get some latkes for the table? You guys yeah. want latkes? And you want some latkes? Yeah, Michael wants latkes, yeah. Is the Jewish population here actually growing? It definitely was decreasing over, I think, the last time I, they did that. I think if that. it stays consistent, that's already pretty right. impressive. Exactly. Like it was 10 or 15 years ago that they did the last population study, and it for sure had decreased a lot, but that was before anything was happening and people were moving into town and moving back. There's a number of now my friends who are saying they're getting married or they're looking to start a family or just hearing what's going on and saying, all right, it's time to come back. So there's a big Arab population in Dearborn and Chaldeans in, in sort of West Bloomfield and there's a lot of a lot of groups do a lot to kind of build those relations and support one another. In the city, I know there's a number of organizations that are working with different other organizations to build some of the the communities and to kind of find Bethel which you're, I think you guys are going to later is like a really great example of that. With our puppets full it was time for us to get out and see this amazing Detroit Jess told us about. We caught up with a pastor and a rabbi. Wait is this a joke? Well, it sounds like it but you were there remember? Oh yeah right. Who are building an interfaith community center in what can only be described as a Jewish Sistine Chapel the old home of Temple Beth El, Michigan's oldest Jewish congregation. Gorgeous! Jamie, great to meet Jamie. you. Hey, Ellie. This Ellie, is... wonderful to have you. Rabbi. Yes. Jamie. Jamie, such a pleasure. Ellie. Ellie, very nice to meet you. You haven't spoken to him yet. This is the former home of Temple Beth El. They started in Michigan in 1850. So I know the building through this amazing partner and friend of mine through Pastor Aramis Hines. I've always been wondering what was in this beautiful sacred space and had the pleasure of making this friendship and him bringing me into the space. And the first time that he did, I just started 
tearing up yeah, because I mean, it just, it's just it's jaw overwhelming it's yeah. jaw dropping it's inspiring it's godly and i knew that this was a place i wanted to come back so this community where we are uh, formerly was was filled with jewish uh, individuals jewish families and this was like the mother congregation in detroit you have very strong roots uh, between the jewish and black community and many many wanted to see it work and it turned out that once the decision was made, the board says we're going, and eventually, you know, everyone kind of shifted out. Right. But there's a shift back into the city now, is what yes. we're getting, followed by the Jewish community. It was a very vibrant and uh, forthcoming uh, community of individuals at large, but the Jewish community specifically, that says, we're ready to challenge the narrative, we're ready to re-engage the city that we thought we would never come back to, and you can't come back without dealing with the hard of your your past and this right here is like the heartbeat Temple mm -hmm. Bethel is the heartbeat of the Jewish past here in the city of Detroit so the goal is to make it a hub for community and that's at the same time use it for the beauty that it offers to re-engage and build relationships and uh, when this thing is done we're going to do great performances out here you guys might have to come and do a stand-up right uh, here in this yeah. space this would, this would be great you don't want us to hey, disagree exactly <laughs> yeah no oh man <laughs> We are gonna. We are sacrily. You don't want to put us in front of this. You community. say no. You say no. We're gonna set Black <laughs> Jewish relations back. Um, and this you know, Tikkun Olam, right? Uh, repairing the world uh, yeah. is what you two seem to be doing here for both communities and together. It's 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 inspirational. We are such loser. We do. What, what, we what do we put them do on with camera? Them? Yeah. If nothing else, you just made us feel really good about ourselves. Okay. Good. Well, that's there you go. Thank you. Know? A full day in Detroit had us thinking once again about Hanukkah and that age-old dilemma of assimilation. What we call the proverbial yidlife crisis. Jews meeting Gentiles in churches that used to be synagogues? Classic crisis. Kosher beef bacon? Crispy crisis. A schwitz for Jewish mafiosos turned brothel turned schwitz once more with a rebuilt mikvah to boot? Peak crisis and we love it. Detroit was teeming with Jewish culture and we just barely looked under the hood. So stay tuned up for part two coming soon. Too much? Too much. Okay, never mind. Zygazund! Zygazund! Hello.